I can remember very clearly the moment that I probably became a landscape architect uh, and it was a television programme about Capability Brown, the landscape designer, picturesque landscape designer and until that time I had never heard of landscape architecture or landscape design or landscape gardening as it was called back then and I suddenly realised that here was this um, approach to landscape I'd already completed a BSc Honours in Geography but, and was really passionate about art, but those two things didn't come together in my world until I saw that. And here was Capability Brown, moving hills, moving lakes, dealing with the flow of water, dealing with the way that the uh, landscape worked, and I had a sudden sort of epiphany <laughs> that this was what I could do. I decided to teach landscape architecture because teaching and research really go together and they, they're kind of a, an engine for each other. And I always had a, a real interest in getting into research and to um, explore a lot of questions that I have about landscape and about design. And teaching was a really good way of sharing that. Landscape architecture should really aim to enhance well-being. I think that's probably the overarching thing that drives what we do. So anything that we do uh, has that ultimate kind of goal of, and it's not just the well-being of humans, of everything, of what uh, called theoretically sometimes more than humans, which is animals and plants, the entire landscape, those sort of intrinsic things as well, not just for our own satisfaction or our own convenience, but to really think about how we can add value uh, to the world that we live in. The things that inspire me when I'm considering a, a project are, I guess, really the richness of the world that we live in um, and there's a wonderful quote I think from Heisenberg which is um, the universe is not only stranger than we think but stranger than we can think and just that constant sense that there's so much to find out about how the landscape is made up about the people that have contributed to it that sense of accumulating cultural landscapes and so on uh, that's the sort of thing that really uh, are so rewarding to find out about when you begin a project, whether it's a design project or a research project or even um, a studio project working with students, is to really get into that place and find out what's going on there and how design can have a conversation with that place in all kinds of ways. For landscape architects, engaging with ecosystems and with communities is absolutely vital. So recently I was involved in designing the memorial landscape for the Pike River mine disaster. And one of the most amazing and um, poignant moving aspects of that was the opportunity to co-design with families of um, the men who had died and with Ngāti Waiwai um, over there and with Doc as well. And through engaging with the other co-designers, uh, we as landscape architects, architects and interpretation designers, there's no way that we could have got to the result that we got to without having those people alongside us all the way and really opening our eyes to things that uh, were you know, part of their world and became part of the design. The single most important learning that I would like students to take away is that there is no single most important learning, but there are many, many things. And also that um, there's a kind of a cliche, I guess, that we use in education, which is lifelong learning. And that one of the things that we hope that some of the skills that they'll take will be lifelong learning. And that's very much part of a, a designer's life.